So remember, we also refer to this just to as EVT. Um, it's one of three um, existence theorems. So the process of it, of course, just as a reminder, is that um, when working with a continuous continuous closed interval functions must have an absolute max and min at either the critical points I'll put an S because there might be none or one or two or more or endpoints. As such, we differentiate function, we solve derivative equal to zero, and then we plug back in critical points and endpoints, and sometimes there's not even a critical point, um, solve derivative equals zero, and also, sorry, derivative is undefined. I'm going to show you an example of undefined today. And endpoints back into original, I don't want to say original, back into function to which finding absolute extrema. Now, I worded this a little bit different um, than I than what I how I worded it yesterday. Okay, yesterday I used like the function f of x. I used f prime of x. Okay, I specifically used those ones. One moment, please. Oh, in the plus. Oh, hey, look at who it is. Some you know, you know some of those kiddos are here. Hi, kiddos. <laughs> Let's show how to get her computer. Um, yesterday, I, I worded it specifically that you had the function f of x, and then you took the derivative f prime of x, you set f prime of x equal to zero, or undefined, I mentioned that, and then you took those critical points and you plugged them back into f of x. f of x was the function that we were trying to maximize. Or minimize the uh, to find extrema. You might not be in in today's problems. We're not gonna well, except maybe the first one, uh, or maybe one. Um, oh, so I'll see. You may not um, be looking to optimize. I keep saying optimize because that's a later topic. Um, to max or minimize the function f and i will show you as such it's it's in the controller so first off let's look at an example and actually let me so the function i'm going to look at here is f of x equals x to the two-thirds parentheses 20 minus x. And we want to find the max and min for f of x. And of course, justify. So we start this process the same. What do we do? Somebody.
Did I get a response here? Thank you. Well, we want to take the derivative. Okay, before we take the derivative, what's probably going to be helpful to us? So I hope everybody is in agreement with my, and, and when I say yes, I'm referring to like private chats. Feel free, like I say, to feel, if you don't want me to, to call out your name or, you know, and to give you the, the credit or non-credit, feel free to send me a direct message always. Um, that kind of tells me that you just want to try to move us along or you, you, you feel you might have the answer, um, you know, hopefully. I know a little bit, I'm, I'm a little bit prone to call you out right or wrong um, when, when you chat to, to the everyone type of thing and some of you don't feel comfortable with that. Um, so please use the direct messages uh, to do that. So we want to take the derivative, but if we took the derivative as is, we'd probably have to use the product rule. And so the correct question, uh, response is yes. We probably want to expand f of x first before we differentiate. So we get 20x to the 2 thirds minus x to the 5 thirds. Now, I'm going to take the derivative of this, and it just makes my derivative easier to take. Um, I get 40 over 3x to the negative 1 third minus 5 over 3x to the <laughs> 2 thirds. Oh, I'm just getting some allergies lately. <laughs> And of course, the idea is that we want, we do want to set this equal to zero. Now, this one is going to be a different, bit different, and I want you to note that it's a different because it is negative power, and it also has fractional powers. So the question is, how do I do this? Well, whenever I have negative powers, I always want to make things into a single fraction. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as 40 over 3x to the one third minus 5 x to the 2 thirds over 3. And I'm going to make this into a single fraction. I want to do a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply this one on the right by x to the 1 third over x to the 1 third. Okay. And in doing that, I get 40 minus 5, well, x to 2 thirds times x to the 1 third, 2 plus 2 thirds plus 1 third is just 1, so I get minus 5x over 3x to the 1 third, and this is what I'm trying to solve equal to 0. Now, when I say the critical points, you're trying to find the, when the function is equal to 0 and undefined. So this function is interesting because this function, I would, uh, technically I'm going to set 40 minus 5x equal to 0, and I'm going to set 3x to the 1 third equal to 0. And this is actually telling me where the function was undefined. Because the denominator, it makes the denominator equal 0. Now some people can recognize this. A lot of people do um, are able to recognize that, oh, if I plug in x equals 0, I get 0 to the negative 1 third, which is undefined, or I get 0 in the denominator. So automatically, I know x equals 0 is a critical point. Okay, It's a critical point that had made the function undefined. And if you do that, then you can just solve this problem algebraically, and you would get the answer. So some people, you know, you add 5, five thirds, x to 2 thirds the other side. You know, some people can do it like that. Some people feel comfortable. It's the algebra, really. As long as you can find me the two, it's true. This is how I will show you our way mathematically. And this gives me x equals, uh, what is that, 8. So there's my critical points. Now what's interesting about this is that x, at x equals 0, the derivative is undefined. But at x equals 0, that's perfectly fine. And 0 is inside my interval. So what happens at x equals 0 is that the function is going to do something like this, or it might do something like this. It's going to be a sharp turn. It's not undefined. It's, not not, it's still continuous, the function f at x equals 0, but there's going to be a sharp turn because the derivative is undefined. Once you've done that, the process is always the same to finish it off. I'm going to find f of negative 1. I'm going to find f of 0. 
I'm going to find f of 8, and I'm going to find f of 20, because mine was negative 1 to 20. Remember, this is a justification. It's also what we refer to as the candidate's test. So if you hear me say candidate's test, or you want to refer to it as what, am I, what you're doing, it's technically, um, in, in calculus, we call it, we identify that as the candidate's test. Now, feel free to utilize your calculator. We're plugging into the one on top. If I plug in negative 1, I get 1 times 21. So I get 21. Negative 1 to the 2 thirds would be negative 1. Uh, also, I get negative 21. No, positive. Negative 1 to the 2 thirds would be positive 1. I'm trying to do this in my head. Um, and there we go. Do I get that? When I plug in 0, okay, that's easy. I just get 0. When I plug in 20, I also get 0. And when I plug in 8, and uh, I get 2 squared, I get 4 times 12, I get 48. <laughs> So, I have a, a min here, a min here, and a max here, just like I did. Now, this one's interesting also because there's two minimums. So, I have an absolute minimum of zero at x equals 0 and x equals 20. You know, if you said you have the absolute minimum, now it depends on what the question's asking. If it asks for the coordinate, if it asks for the x values, if it asks for um, the, the, the min, you know, there's the question itself might be worded, might be a multiple choice question. And I have an absolute max of 48 that occurs at x equals 8. And that's the process, okay? Now, this problem was different for two things, and the reason why I wanted to show you this example is that this one had a function that we had to find when the function was undefined. Now, noting that the, on the interval, the original function, or the derivative was undefined, but the original function was defined and continuous everywhere. This one was also nice because, or interesting because it had two outputs that were the same value that were both one of the extrema, in this case, the minimum. So the minimum can occur at two different places. Questions? Uh, get some coffee in me. All right. You may be asked to find absolute extrema for other functions than y equals f of x. Sometimes they're explicit. So you might be asked for f prime of x you might be asked for x of x of t, um, v of t, or a of t more more specifically. Now, problems do not explicitly say or at least rarely, to find max min of f prime of x. And I don't even want to say rarely. Um, actually, I'm just going to delete the word rarely. They, will, they do not. They do not explicitly say to find the max and minimum of f prime of x. All right. Instead, what they say is to find 
when y equals f of x is increasing most rapidly, sorry, increasing slash decreasing. most rapidly max min of f prime of x so you 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 might see a problem that starts out by saying find the max and min of the function that's part a and then part b says find the x values or find the values find the x values where the function is increasing most rapidly that means it's only asking for the absolute maximum some problems don't ask you for both the max and the min they might just ask you for one so what that means is that the function f prime of x is yours similarly you might be if given y equals x of t you may be asked to maximize a of t. Well, you know that a of t is just equal to x double prime of t, but that just becomes your function. That is your function so the goal here and the, the trick here is that you have to first you know in in the first problem in the first part when i say increasing most rapidly you have to recognize that you're trying to maximize the derivative so you find that derivative and that becomes your function now a lot of people a lot of you will get a little bit like huh um because I mean, you'll, you, you'll see like, oh, the derivative of, of acceleration or the derivative of velocity, I'm going to set the derivative of velocity equal to zero. Isn't that acceleration? Yes, but we want to treat it as the derivative of velocity because the velocity is the function we're trying to, to optimize, to, to maximize and minimize. Same thing with f prime of x. Well, if I take the second derivative, the derivative of f prime, isn't that f double prime of x? Yes, but more importantly, it's the derivative for f prime of x. And since we're trying to find the max and min of f prime, we set that derivative equal to zero. Let's take a look at the example from yesterday. In the example from yesterday, I gave you f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5 on the interval negative 3 to 4. And in yesterday's problem, I asked you to find um, the max and the minimum of, of f of x. But in this question, I want you to, we want to find the x value when f of x is decreasing. most rapidly and and typically like i said this is typically part two of the question and of course justify all right so when i read this part right here Decreasing most rapidly. That tells me that I'm trying to find the minimum. I'm trying to find the minimum of f prime of x. This is a notation that we can use. It tells us what we're trying to do. So this problem is asking me to find the minimum of f prime of x. So that means I have to first find f prime of x, which is like step zero. And then I take the derivative of that function and set it equal to zero. I take the derivative of the derivative and set that equal to zero. And then I plug it back into the derivative. I know it sounds complicated, but the process, if you just stay with the course or stay, stay the course, it should be okay. So we're, we found f prime of x yesterday. 
3x squared plus 4x. We do not need to set that equal to zero. Yesterday's problem we did. Now, what do I do? Uh, we look at a factor. No, I just said that we don't do that. I, I just, just said we do not set that equal to zero. And that's all that factoring would do for us. What do I do now? So what do I do? No, I just said I, I just said that we do not set this equal to zero. I, that was literally the last words I had said before I asked you. Didn't you say take the derivative of the derivative? Yeah, we take the derivative of the derivative. We take the derivative of this function. We are not trying to maximize f of x or minimize f of x, so we're not going to set its derivative equal to zero. We're going to set the derivative of our function. Now, technically, and I do see some students do this, some students will say, well, I'm just going to call this g of x. That's my new function, and I'm going to set the derivative of g of x equal to zero. That's basically what we're doing. That's our function. So I'm going to set, I'm going to find the second derivative, which is? Cx plus 4. And what am I going to do now? Equal it to zero. Equal that to zero. Perfect. And that gives me uh, x equals uh, negative two thirds once I simplify. Okay. Next step. Put it back into the first derivative? Correct. But you're missing something. What are you missing? So if Rita got it nailed it, she plugged negative two thirds back into the derivative f prime. But what else do I have to do? Remember, I'm, I need the justification. Yeah, so I need to use the candidates test. So I also need to find f prime of negative three and f prime of four. So I have to find the endpoints as well. This is your justification, okay? Without plug in, and the answer might be at one of these endpoints. So you you must plug in to the deriv the derivative. Now we're plugging into the derivative, not the function. All right. So we're not plugging into f of x, the top one. We're going to plug into there. So it's negative three. It's three times negative three squared plus four times negative three. Um, that gives me fifteen. Um, I'm just doing it just to, to move us along. The next one, if I plug in negative two-thirds into the derivative, I would get negative 1.333. Because we are the reason why we plug it, we plug back into the derivative is because we are trying to maximize, we're trying to minimize the derivative. We're trying to find out what the smallest value for the derivative has. So we're going to compare derivative values. Basically, we're minimizing slope. So we want to find when it has the, the smallest slope, or most negative at least, or slope. Because that's what we're trying to find. We are not trying to find the function value. We don't care about the function value. We care about the slope value. If I plug in f prime of 4, we get 64. There is the min right here. So there is a, the function f of x is decreasing most rapidly at x equals negative two thirds. Because this question asked me for the x value, and there's my answer. This was my justification, and I am set. 
So we're plugging back into the derivative because the derivative was the function we are trying to optimize. Now, like I said, if you wanted to call that g of x, then you would have taken the, you would have said g prime of x equal to zero, which would have given you x equals negative two thirds, and then you plug back into g of x. The wording of the question is saying that you want to find the, the steepest negative slope. So you want to find when the slope is the smallest, not the largest. So it's, it's a question about extrema for the slope. Now, I could have done the same problem. I want you to note that I could have done the same problem Uh, and, and actually, let me, in this example, x of t is x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 7. All right. I want you to find, find when acceleration, find the maximum. Oh, sorry. In this interval, um, ooh. I'm trying. To, this is what happens when you try to do a problem off the top of your head. Um, four, twelve. Um, I'm going to change this to a minus. Um, and I just realized, sorry, this is what I get for trying to do them by the top of my head. These are all T's. I just said X of T. Sorry about that. Okay, so that's good. Four, twelve. Oh, and that's a cubed. So sorry. It's done. It's correct now. It's correct, I promise. Um, Zero to four. Okay, find the maximum acceleration. We're going to try to find the maximum acceleration. So this problem requires a step zero. What is? What do I have to do first? What do I have to? What do I have to do before I start doing EVT? Before I start applying the properties and, and processes of EVT, I must first do something a step zero. When we did a step zero over here. What is that step zero? Find the derivative. More specifically, you're correct, but I want to word it differently. And, and I want to know what my goal is for in step zero. And, and to, to accomplish that goal, we'll have to take a derivative. And as was noted, another derivative. Um, I'll just, I'll just read it. I need to find A of T. I wasn't given acceleration, right? So in this problem, I need to I needed to minimize the derivative. Well, I wasn't given the derivative, so I have to first start by finding derivative. So that's not part of EBT. I have to first find the function. I was given the information I needed to be able to find a of t. And we know that a of t is equal to x double prime of t, the second derivative of, of position. So I'm going to find x prime of t for t cubed, I think you're all solid on terms of taking a derivative of a polynomial. 
minus 9t squared minus 2. I'm going to find the second derivative, x double prime of t equals 12t squared minus 18t. Now, that is acceleration. So that's the function that I am trying to find the maximum for. I'm trying to maximize. That is the function I'm trying to maximize. Now we can get into EVT, the process for EVT, which means I'm going to do what? That's the EVT process, okay? I'll let you have, go back to your notes to update that. I, that's what I'm referring to as the EVT process. But sometimes you have to do a step zero. So what do I do? What's the first process? What's the first step of the EVT process? It's right there. Oh, uh, differentiate. Differentiate. I'm going to take the derivative. All right. So I'm going to take the derivative of what? On the maximum, the acceleration. Acceleration, perfect, yes. So I'm going to find a prime of t. Okay, I'm going to find a prime of t, which is technically the third derivative of the original function I was given. And that's where a lot of the complicated, like, uh, what, 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 I'm saying the third derivative equal to zero. It's okay. You're just, the function is, the function that we want to work with is the second derivative, which is called acceleration. And now, in the EVT process, I'm going to take the derivative of that function, a of t. So a prime of t is 24t minus 18. And what am I going to do? Now, Ariana. Now we equal zero. Now we set our and our, we set that equal to zero. And so I get a uh, t equals 18 over 24. Uh, what was that, six? It was three-fourths? Okay. Next process, next step of the EVT process. I've, I've set the derivative of the function equal to zero, and I solve for the x value. What do I do? Uh, we, know, we use the linear equation and change the t for, for the number. For which function? 3 over 4. For which function? 3 over 4 is not a function. Yeah, I, I don't want you to refer to it as, there's no F in this problem. I also don't, you know, I also don't want you, yeah. So I, I'm hearing I, I, the, the, in, the, in the chat, it's plugged back into F double prime of X, but more specifically, it's plugging back into x double prime of t, you could think of it as that, but even better, you're going to plug this value back into a of t. What else do I have to plug into a of t? Zero and I don't know why I went to four. I should have just done to one. Um, I can do zero in the top of my head. Seven. <laughs> I don't know the other answer. What is a of three fourths? Can they, or can anybody do that? Three four. Um, it's twelve times three. 
over 4 squared minus 18 times 3 over 4. And on this one, it's 12 times 4 squared minus 18 times 4. I don't know those off the top of my head. You are correct. It's 0. Um, be careful. <laughs> All right. So what I did, and it, I would have probably realized it after a little bit because I've done problems and an alarm would have gone off in my head nine times out of ten. And when I do a mistake, an alarm goes off and I, and I catch my mistake as I'm working in it. I plugged it and I, I looked back to the original function, which was a bad, bad G. Um, it's, uh, I'm plugging zero into this function. And sometimes that's why showing the work like this, by doing this, I would have realized because I was I was showing that um, I get zero. So thank you. Um, what do I get for the other values? Uh, what's up? Negative six point seventy five. Negative six point seventy five. It shouldn't be shouldn't be, and that's it. It was it doesn't really matter in terms. Of, I'm not trying to find the y value. Um, is that is that the accurate to three decimal places? No, it's uh, the noter. It's uh one twenty. All right, so if you wrote negative 6.75 and that was our final answer, um, and that was going to be the correct value, you would have gotten zero credit. All right, remember in AP Calculus, if you're getting decimals, you have to have three decimal places or you get no credit for your answer. Um, what happens when you plug in four? It's going to be a gigantic number. It's going to be a gigantic number. I know six. Oh, because it's minus 18 times four. Minus 18 times 4, yeah. Okay, I thought it was like plus. I was like, it should be a lot more, a lot bigger, but it, yes. All right, so what's the maximum? 120. Absolute maximum of 120. Didn't ask me for the, and I could say at x equals 4. If I had asked you for the minimum, it would have been negative 6.751. All right, and if you had written negative 6.75, you would have not received credit for that answer. You would have still got the justification problem, but you, for you, because you didn't go to three decimal places in AP Calculus, they would not have given you credit. And that's it. So you're still doing your homework as a handout. I made it one page back in front, or two pages. Um, I think you should feel much more comfortable with these types of problems, um, be able to show your work. Um, and that's all that I have for you for today. Have a good weekend, everybody. Remember, Monday is a holiday, and I will see you on Tuesday.